building a God-centered business is about more than just making money. It's about working with excellence. Whether you're just starting out or you've been in business for years, there's always room to grow in faith and in excellence. With God at the center, anything is possible. It's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of success and really forget about what truly matters. But for those of us striving to build businesses that honor God, there's a different standard to uphold. One that goes beyond profits and metrics. It's about working with excellence, rooted in our commitment to God and guided by his principles every step of the way. You know, God has provided all you need to live out your calling and to do it in a way that's best for you. And he expects you to live it out with excellence to keep working, to be the woman God is calling you to be. So what we're gonna do today is go over six excellence actions that you can do each day to build excellence in your business. And these are what they are. Commitment to God, persistence in the work, creating empowering habits and rituals, working steadily, celebrating progress, and staying present in the moment. So join us, Wise Woman, for another episode of the Truth and Business Show, where we explore that intersection between faith and business. We are your hosts, Deneen TV. And I'm Mary Allure. And today we're diving into the topic of working our God-centered businesses with excellence. You know, Mary, when I start to talk about excellence in our work, there's always a couple of biblical people that come to mind for me. Um, one of my examples is Ruth. And I know for you, it's Joseph, right? Yes. Yes. Joseph is, Joseph is my, like one of my favorite characters in characters, persons in the Bible. Yeah. So what do you, what about his, his story really hits home for you when you think about doing things with excellence? Oh my gosh. He did things with excellence and he was under a lot of stress, pressure. He did things with excellence while he was in the dungeon mm -hmm. for years. He did things yes. for, with excellence, even though people forgot about him and, mm -hmm. and pretty much just ignored him and forgot, you know, said they'd do something and then they didn't follow up. And he still continued with excellence. He could have been so um, angry, bitter. Uh, yeah. He could have just let himself just sit there and waste away, but he continued to work with excellence. I love that. That's a great, that's a great example for us is that even under duress, under stress, that he yeah. still did what he was supposed to do. And that reminds right. me, you know, Ruth is a little bit different story because Ruth, you know, decided to go back to Naomi's homeland when she was a foreigner. And what yeah. I feel for her in excellence is that she was ended up being put in a position where she was doing something, gleaning from the fields that might have been something beneath her. Like she could have thought of herself, well, I'm really too good for this, but she didn't. She did it with excellence because not because she needed it to survive, but because she knew that that was the right thing to do, that no matter right. what, no job is too small, right? Right. <laughs> that's yes, kind of what it that's is. That's so good. So yeah. I love, I love that we're going to talk about how we can have more excellence in our businesses and yep. what that can really look like, whether we're under stress or we're doing some things that we think maybe we don't need to be doing. <laughs> I know <laughs> things that are maybe beneath us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But before we get into our wonderful topic today, I want to remind everyone to subscribe. Please subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on your podcast platform you know, make sure you're following us and give us a five-star rating or a like, you know, all those things help. And um, of course, we'd love it if you'd share the episode from wherever you're listening or watching. Excellent. Excellent. I love that. I love that. So let's get into these six excellence actions. So the first thing I want to recognize is our one commitment to God. Yes, definitely, definitely at the core of any God-centered business, you know, lies, you have to have that deep com commitment to God himself. You know, it, this is the foundation that we want to build everything else upon. Mm -hmm. It's true. When God is at the center of our business, it really transforms from that mere like venture like I'm making money or I'm helping people to really a ministry because you are serving people. It's a platform where we serve others. We glorify God in everything that we're doing. Right. 
Right. Definitely. I know when I said I was going to do this, like I am going to have a business finally, and I'm going to run it, you know, the way God wants me to with God, you know, directing all my actions. It Mm -hmm. was like, that's what I said. Like, that's what I want to do. Right. Uh, Exactly. I want to do it the right way. And with excellence. And with excellence, right. So the excellence action here is really starting with God, meeting daily with God. That's where we have to be. We can't just be like striving to do it all by ourselves. We have to stay every day. I like, I gotta say meeting with the CEO, the chief, everything officer meeting with the boss. Right. And we do that through our prayer time and our Bible study time. Right. Right. Definitely. Yes. And that's why I was, you know, God blessed me. He, he had me meet you, which we met immediately when I started saying, I'm going to do this the God's way (laughs) I met you. And I've been able to, I've learned more about meeting daily with him and, you know, uh, Bible study and getting to know him better. Right. And I think a lot of times when people are thinking, well, is this, am I in God's will? Am I doing what he wants me to do? When we have that daily meeting, we really do stay aligned with God, right? We, we get to know him better. We get to know ourselves better. We we get to know how we operate and, and he really is the boss. I I always say that story. Like if you had a a real, you know, in-person boss and that boss said to you, I need a meeting. You wouldn't be like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I don't have time right now. Or uh, can we plan that for next Thursday? Or right. Whatever? Yeah. No, I'll you do would, it tonight. Oh, yeah. Can I'll we do it tonight. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you would just close up your laptop or take your paper or whatever it is you do. And you'd go into the office. Well, that, you know, we shouldn't be neglecting God that way. And that is the first excellence action to meet with God each day. But let's talk about the next one that we were going to talk about today. And that is persistence in the work, because I believe I have seen that commitment alone is not enough. (laughs) Believe it or not, building a God-centered business requires persistence. I mean, like unwavering determination to just keep going, no matter what, no matter those challenges, the setbacks that you have to, it's that self-motivation, right? Right. (laughs) Self-motivation with God, like, and with saying like, okay, I got, I'm, I'm self-motivated because I'm going to trust God, his plan, his provision. Mm -hmm. You know, I I know that he's faithful to see me through or all of us through every trial and tribulation. Right. And I think that one of the things that people when they're thinking about persistence in the work, they want to see these big jumps. They want to see this big push, like all of, like a miracle is going to happen. I know. Yes. But really the excellence action here is making incremental progress, right? Yes. That it's, yes. it's taking the steps, the one step, trusting God, like you said, right? Taking yeah. that one step to then build on the next step, on the next step. But a lot of times we've got, all the priorities all at the same level. I know. I know. It's so hard. We do this. We all do this. <laughs> yeah. So what we do is we stay busy. And so yeah. our, our decision-making kind of is, looks like it's all over the place. And so instead of making good decisions that take us in the right direction, that build our reputation or build our, our, our following or whatever we're trying to build, we kind of like, let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try that. And we're all over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And then I think you say this all the time, we're making a bunch of tiny little uh, splashes, instead of a big splash that goes and reaches more and more people, right? The impact that we can make is so yeah. much bigger when we have a big old rock in the middle of that lake, <laughs> instead of like flitting around on top of it, <laughs> right? And I think it also is a testament to staying consistent in our efforts and our actions. Again, don't get the shiny object syndrome, like go off and do try this or go off and try that, but really sit down with the CEO and have that meeting with God and say, he's going to give you the best ideas or be in that community with other people or just have yet one other friend or whatever right. to be able to bounce those ideas around, right? Yeah, that's so important. What you yeah. just said is so important. Community, one friend, a person who's along with you on the journey, you really need that. Right, Otherwise because- you might give up. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and we just don't have all the best ideas. I mean, that's why, no. that's why we're designed for community. God doesn't expect us to do it all by ourselves. We are here to help one another. So I, I, 
I want people to really remember it's about that incremental progress. And that's why it's so important to keep track of it so that you can look back and say, this is where I was, but wow, look at where I've come. I think that's right. what's so exciting. Okay. Yeah. Well, the next thing we're going to talk about is creating empowering habits and rituals, or what I say, like a routine, but the ritual, like how you do something, because the way you do it helps you to remember to do it. <laughs> yes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so and this comes right on the heels of cultivating persistence, right? Having a habit yeah. or ritual yeah. because creating those habits really empowers us on the entrepreneurial journey. It's the, the daily practices that we talk about already, prayer, meditating on God's word to things like goal setting and time management. Yeah. These, all these things really serve to strengthen our connection to God and keep us focused on the work that God has called us to do. That's right. what I love about this. It's not just about, well, I'm really good at my ritual of meeting with God, but then you're not good at a ritual of good time management for your business. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So the excellence action is to build small, empowering habits and rituals. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And, to, yeah. and so there are habits you're going to do a little bit at a time. Small. I love it that they're small. Yeah. So they're not overwhelming. It's not overwhelming. Like, oh, I have to do this every day. <laughs> I know. I mean, people try, try and change everything about them when they are trying to create a new habit and break an old habit. Because usually what's good is to break an old habit that's not serving you and replacing it with a new habit, right? And again, it goes back to making them really bite-sized things that you can do. I, I have I have the example of um, when I was on my nutrition plan, and even now I still do this. Um, you know, I love chocolate. I know most people, most women love chocolate <laughs> um, and, or any too. kind of, any kind of sugar craving. Right. And so instead of reaching for that snack, reaching for that chocolate, I have tea. And so I have even have chocolate tea, but I have all different flavors of tea. And so instead of putting the candy in my mouth or putting something with calories in it, now I have that flavor coming in. That was my breaking the old habit, creating yeah. a new habit. But right. I guess in our businesses and things like that, we have to create all kinds of habits for all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, for example, um, not having, not being on social media all uh -huh. the time. That's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> I think it's, it's that you have to be kind of a little disciplined here as well. Yes. Like say, okay, I'm only going to go on Facebook in first thing in the morning or before I leave for the day of work. Right. right. That's what I do. And if you need to put a timer on it, like, I'm going to yeah. go there. But for me, it's okay. What do I want to get accomplished here? Do those things. I want to say happy birthday to everyone. I want to make sure I don't have any messages and, and leave it at that. That's yeah. kind of the hard part, but that's why if you continue to do it, it becomes a habit and then it gets easier. Right. Right. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. I put a, the time limit on through my phone and it, of course, fortunately, it gives you the option to to say, let me go for another 15 minutes or <laughs> or let me ignore this limit today. But oh my gosh. It just takes discipline to say, nope, I'm done. And it yeah. turns off the app. And, and you it's have to, really helpful. You have to decide what is the priority of the day? Like have yeah. that one specific thing that you really want to get done that day and right. do that first. And do that most. And then those, those other little things can kind of attach at the end. I know for me, my best time of the day to actually get creative work done is in the morning. So yeah. if I wasted all my morning on social media, that would be Ugh. wasting my best brain power. Yes. And then you'd be, <laughs> you'd be upset, depressed or something, you know, they say watching it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't really improve our mood. It yeah. doesn't really help us. And just like we talked about the incremental steps, this is also those small things that we have to make these goals really small and actionable yeah. and like have a plan, like not just say, well, I'm going to not eat chocolate today. It's like, you have to right. have a plan. And, yeah. and again, when you get to these places where you have to do something that's like not your favorite thing to do in your business, you have to 
not make any excuse. You can't procrastinate. You can't no. complain about it you, because excellence means not complaining. That's what Ruth did. Ruth didn't complain about the fact that she was gleaning from the fields, right? right? So that, that's part of our excellence in that we're not complaining about it, especially to other people. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. It's so easy to do. It's and but really, is it, does it really help? I mean, maybe you, you could maybe just vent, get it off your chest and then be done. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, Not an journals are, thing. Journals are good for that, oh, right? Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> you, can, or you can write that scathing email, but then you just don't send it, or you right. just write it all out and get it out of your head. That's yeah, get it out. Yeah. Definitely, get exactly. it out. Somehow. Exactly. Well, for me, I really see these six excellence actions as they really do build on one another. So we've gone through three of three or four. I can't even remember at this point, but. Mm -hmm. I wonder if anyone out there who's listening, who's watching, really sees it. I'd love to get some feedback from all of you. What have you noticed so far from what we've discussed? Has anything clicked for you? How do the how do you think these actions really build excellence in your business? We would like to love to know down in the comments what you're thinking about any of the things that we're talking about. Now, I know we talk a lot about habits. We talk a lot about persistence and discipline and all that stuff, but maybe you're listening for the first time. So let us know what you're thinking. Right. <laughs> yeah. Are these things new to you or, or do you just need a refresher? Exactly. We always do. Oh, yes. we always do. That great <laughs> reminder. Yes. Right. We always need that. So the fourth thing we are in the fourth of our six okay. is, is that we're going to look at working steadily. Um, and these kind of all kind of build upon each other working steadily. You know, it's another key aspect of running a God center business. It's showing up every day, putting in the effort and trusting God and trusting him that he will bless our labor. Oh yeah. And it doesn't mean that we are going to push ourselves to no. burn out. That's not what it means. Rather, it's really, it's finding that rhythm that allows yeah. us to be productive and to be able to sustain our work. I know you've watched people kind of just do that. Go, go, go. What does that call yeah. the hustle, 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 hustle culture. Yeah. We are not that. <laughs> yeah. We, and, and, and God doesn't want that for us. I mean, no, even Jesus no. says, take my yoke upon me. My burden is light. Everything that he right. wants us to find rest in him. And so we're going to go with the old adage. We're going to work smarter, not harder. Right. Right. <laughs> and there, there are times that I've done it. I mean, I'm, we're certainly, I know Denny and I, we've had times where we'd have to really push ourselves, um, to get through a deadline or something, but it's just, we can't make it a habit. This is not a habit. We want you guys to make <laughs> right. Can't exactly. make the habit of hustling all the time. It doesn't right. work. Right. So the excellence action. So it is to commit to sustained effort over time. I think what people do is they tend to do the go, 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 go. Oh, I'm so exhausted. I, and then they yeah. take a break and go, go, right. go, 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 go. And then they take a break. That's not how it works. It's the go, 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 take. A, and, and some of the ways that I know I have done that is that I do take that Sabbath every week. I yeah. take one day where 24 hours I shut down. I don't go looking at my computer. Mm -hmm. I don't look on my phone, nothing. I just, even if I see it, I'm just like, I'm not opening it. So right. I just take a whole like mental day away every right. single week. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I mean, we can understand that yes, sometimes we have to work a little bit harder because mm -hmm. we are doing a special project, but I think it's more about consistency and persevering and finding our rhythm, as I said. Um, right. And that comes with knowing God's design of us, right? Right. Definitely. <laughs> we have to know how we're built and not just try to do it because you see somebody else doing it mm -hmm. uh, that way. No, I'm not made that way. So I, my design is to do it this way. Exactly. That the way I'm designed, it makes me um, someone a solution to someone else's problem, right? Because yeah. you're the perfect, you're the perfect like answer for them. Whatever yeah. their personality, how God's designed them, they find you, and your rhythm is their rhythm, or you're very similar, and right. you can, 
you have an ebb and a flow of everything. Right. And, and obviously it is that what I love is it's a sustained effort. Again, we don't want to be just go, go, go till we can't go. And then, and then we give up, we give up yeah. more easily and that kind of yeah. stuff. And I think it's when we work in God's design of us, which is what we help everyone learn how to do. We're not trying to fit anybody into a blueprint, into a model that is not them, which mm-hmm. a lot of coaches do. I know, but really it's learning about ourselves, God's design of us, because it helps us to be more obedient to God right. because we, we fit, we fit together in his plan right. and the solution right. that we can only bring, as I always say, his part of God, of our part in his plan is just really dedicated to us. And we just need to learn to do it with excellence, right? <laughs> right, right. And when you know your design, when you know this is the way I am built, then you can do it with excellence because you're not trying to do it like somebody else. And you are right. being obedient because mm-hmm. you're doing it the way God made you do to do it. Exactly. So that leads us into celebrating progress. All along the journey, it's really important to celebrate progress, both the big things that happen and those little things that happen. So if you have a big, yay, this happened, we want to celebrate that with you. We want you to celebrate. But even those small things, you know, every achievement, whether it's some kind of sales milestone or just staying consistent in your daily routine, all of that is worth celebrating. Right, definitely, because these moments they of celebration, they fuel our to give us more. It's fuel to give us more motivation, and it also reminds us of God's faithfulness in our business endeavors. Like oh, it's, yes, it's you can. It's these celebrations can even be just practicing gratitude and mm-hmm. just thanking God, like thank you, God, that I did that meeting yesterday, or exactly. you know, it can be small things, yeah, or that yeah. I finished that proposal. Mm -hmm. No, definitely, definitely. So our excellence action here is to use the tools necessary to be successful. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that every entrepreneur needs to do. We always need to be acquiring new skills and learning Mm -hmm. new things, right? Yep, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, we 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 just, we, I'm sorry. No, no, I was going to say, go ahead. (laughs) I was going to say, we, 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 we have to always be learning new things because we just don't know what we just don't know. So we have to keep looking, always looking for that. Do what else do I need to learn? That's what I was going to say. So, right. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And when you're learning, you're adapting, you're learning new skills, you're learning new techniques. You're so you're adapting. You're not going to be like, I'm not going to change. This is the way it is. (laughs) Oh, definitely. Yeah. I know. I mean, there's so many times when We've had clients that they come in and we say, well, I want you to try this. And they're like, well, I tried something like that before and it didn't yes. work or, or they don't want to try it. Cause I, I don't know if that's really the direction I want to go. They want to have it like all set up in their mind instead right. of trying it, seeing trying if it, it. work and then pivoting and going, well, that didn't work. But if I do it this way, maybe it will work. And I know right. for you and I, over the last few years, we've had to do this. We've tried things and it hasn't always worked out. So we've pivoted and tried a different thing and, and we need to be flexible like that, I guess. Yeah, we as, do. As entrepreneurs is to not be afraid. And because we have God on our side, we, we can be more, uh, risk takers we can because we yeah. trust him and we've done all these other excellence actions and now it's like okay god put the tools in front of me please pray for that you know what do i need what do i not know what do i need to learn still and ask him to to put those resources in front of us i think that's Absolutely. a really important part of what we do and yeah. of course a lot of times that can be a coach or a mentor right <laughs> oh yeah i think it's very important i think that those if you look at entrepreneurs or others in business who've succeeded, they've had worked with others who they have been ahead of them and mm-hmm. they've been coached. I mean, even if you look at sports, they they have a coach. People have coaches that guide them. Yeah. Um, we just can't come to the entrepreneurship um, setting and think that we know it all. And we're going to just, we're just, we don't, you know, we might not have the resources or anything. So we're just going to figure it out on ourselves, on our own can't. Oh no. And I mean, even the best coaches and mentors and people in business, 
they always have somebody to talk to. They always have somebody to bounce ideas off of. We never outgrow that. No, definitely not. (laughs) So, and of course, all of these, with all of these, we have to stay present in the moment. Mm. It's really important for us to help us make good decisions. Mm. You know, we're we have so many distractions <laughs> that it yeah, can be true. so easy so true. to lose sight of what truly matters and mm-hmm. where we are, where God has put us this moment. Exactly. And that's yeah. why it's so important to cultivate this mindfulness. That's the present moment. We, we're seeking yeah. God's guidance for every decision that we make. And it really, in that way, can ensure that our actions really align with his will and and does what we want to want it to do to bring glory to his name. Right. Yes, so, right. so I, the excellence action here is to recognize that your greatest power lies in the present moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. we can have that dream way out yeah. there of what we want to have happen, but if we're not doing the things we need to do right now, that dream's never going to happen. We have no. to take all the steps, all the little tiny incremental things in between to get us there. So we have to stay in the pro- present moment. And the biggest thing that I see is our problem with multitasking. What do you think? Yes. Oh my gosh. Do I agree? I agree. And I feel like in our generation <laughs> that we Which were- generation are you talking about? <laughs> forget whichever one we are but anyway. uh, we're xers we're xers <laughs> i think we were sold this this bill of goods that was like you have to multitask multitask and i even remember like your our resumes and our interviews like i'm a very good multitasker it was something that we were proud of and we wanted to be known for exactly exactly and what we have come to realize and it's not just because we're getting older i think this no. is for all the generations yes is that you do better you do better with excellence when you work on one task at a time yes yes right uh, yes and, and be, really I have to train myself to do this now because oh, i yeah. train myself to multitask and it's not, right not great i oh. find i find that i could get a lot more accomplished if i do one thing at a time, create the discipline, Yeah. decide, okay, today, the most important thing for me to get done is this. And that's what I'm going to spend the bulk of my time on. And I decide to do it now, like, instead of like that procrastination problem, or Mm -hmm. anything like that, it's really about what am I going to get done today? That's the big thing I'm going to get done. If other things get done, awesome. If they don't, I know, I still got that thing done. I know. Right. (laughs) Going back to that whole eat the frog, eat the frog first. And then I I said that to my daughter the other day. She, (laughs) she, uh, if a lot of people don't know, but she is, um, she's a graphic designer and she has a YouTube channel and she's, you know, she has people who sponsor her. She has all kinds of stuff that happens. And I said that concept to her and she had never heard it before. Here's how here's a 27 year old excuse me, 26 year old that, you know, doesn't know what, what, what that is. And I mm-hmm. had to explain, eat the frog means do the thing you don't want to do first yeah. because you know, yeah. you have to do it. Discipline yourself to do it. She goes, that's such a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> good. And it does come down to being prioritizing things, right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Putting things in priority. And, and, and we help our clients with what we call the super eight. So super eight your day, right. If you can get these eight things done in one day, then you're going to feel accomplished. You can shut off for the day. You can take that little bit of a rest. You don't have to keep pushing yourself, you know, and and making sure you're doing the four areas and two things in each area. And it can look different every day, but it gives Mm -hmm. you a way to think about prioritizing because when you are in the present moment, getting things done, it feels really good that you're accomplishing things, right? You do. You do. You do feel good about it. Yep. (laughs) 
Uh, is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you wanted to talk about with these six things, Mary? No, I think we did good. I hope we did good. Let us know. (laughs) Yeah, really. I hope this discussion has given all of us some things to think about as we strive to really conduct and work in our businesses with excellence. Okay. The six actual excellence actions. That's hard to say. It's kind of a little bit of a tongue. Yes, Yes. it is. (laughs) So first was commitment to God. The second was persistence in work. Third was creating empowering habits and rituals. Fourth was working steadily. Fifth was celebrating progress. And sixth was staying present in the moment. These are all specific things that you can do to work toward excellence in your business. And they all build on each other. It's not like there's one that's by itself hanging out there. These are all foundational things that as you do them, it will get more and more and more. And you'll be able to see the progress you're making, the excellence, how much better you feel, all those things. (laughs) Yes, definitely. (laughs) And if you'd like support to do that, if you need some help, um, you know, we're here for you and we invite you to have a clarity call with Deneen. Um, I won't be there, but if you want me to be, I can be there. Um, so click the link in the description below. Um, and so you can make an appointment to chat with Deneen. So thanks for joining us today on the Truth and Business Show. This is Mary Allure. And I'm Deneen TV. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, be filled to overflowing. Overflowing.